Hi, young people. This is a uh, interesting little case. Maybe I'll start doing these little case reviews. I, I like reading these cases. It gives you a good understanding on how the courts and the lawyers can argue and muddy up and come up with all these things over something that most people say, oh, Miranda, you should have been Mirandized, uh, or, you know, what's probable cause? All oh, that's easy. So let, let's go over this case here. And if you're a cop, this will help you understand how the court's going to rule and how you got to be careful so you don't step on your pee, pee If you're a civilian, it understands when what cops are doing and when you're talking to government, how to protect yourselves and not let yourself fall into these traps. So People v. Diego uh, Delgado did detectives violate Miranda while questioning a murder suspect. So here's some facts to the case. Delgado shot and killed... Deshaun and his girlfriend in what was probably a drug ripoff. At the scene, Sacramento County Sheriff Detectives, my brothers, I, I, I've always said much respect for SAC. Every time I work with them, they always did good work, good cops. Uh, I know if you're a criminal in Sacramento, you hate the Sacramento Sheriffs, but from a cop's perspective, they do pretty good, solid work. Uh, and in this case, I think they did pretty good... Even though it wasn't planned, uh, I was kind of surprised they let both confide. Uh, let me know. I don't want to blow it here because uh, I'll ask some questions here. Okay, so Sacramento Sheriff's Detectives found Cannon's phone, which contained a text message pertaining to a drug deal. This led them to Delgado, who the detectives mistakenly believed was wanted on an arrest warrant. So Delgado was arrested, driven to the sheriff's station, and held in an interrogation room and shackled. Now, why this becomes important is, remember, when you, do, when you deal with Miranda, there's two things when you have to give Miranda, custody and interrogation. And custody means in the mind of the person being questioned, do they feel they're free to leave? So if a guy's shackled and he's arrested and brought to the PD, most reasonable people will not feel they have the right to leave. So as soon as I read this, I was like, why wouldn't they Miranda him? He's clearly in custody and they're clearly going to question him. Well, it gets better because they didn't suspect him. About an hour later, a detective entered the room and questioned him. The detective testified he was surprised to find Delgado in shackles because he did not consider him a suspect at this point. Well, they wanted to bring him down for questioning, not because they wanted to know what he ate for dinner. The fact that he said that he wasn't a suspect, maybe they were going to say, well, he was a person of interest. Whatever. Word games. So he removed the shackles and told Delgado he was free to leave. So this is key. Remember, Miranda's only required when you have custody and interrogation. If you're free to leave, there is no custody. So when the cop removed his shackles and said you're free to leave, custody was gone. Therefore, you can have interrogation. And I don't need to Mirandize you. Just like I can interrogate you when you call 911, I don't need to Mirandize you. You can hang up the phone. You don't have to talk to me. You voluntarily call 911. You voluntarily stay on the phone. Therefore, anything you say is voluntary and I can use it against you. And I don't have to warn you of your rights. But if I have custody and you don't have a choice to leave, and then I try to question you, then we have issues. Okay. He told him he was free to go. Then, without advising Delgado of his Miranda rights, he asked him some questions about the murder. Although Delgado denied involvement, he said some things that were in conflict with information from other witnesses. Okay, so he lied. And that's why you don't talk to the cops. And if you do, that's how you increase their probable cause to go further. Had the guy shut his mouth, he would have been gone. But anyway, he didn't, and he got arrested. And we'll see if he got convicted or where they kept his statement. After obtaining these statements, the detective left Delgado along in the room, but suggested to another detective that he continue to question him. According to the court, when the second detective entered the interrogation room, he demanded that Delgado unlock his cell phone and told him he could not leave until he did. Well, we have a third custody change. First, he's brought in with shackles, so he's not free to leave. Then a cop removes the shackles and says, you're free to leave. Now another detective comes in and says, you can't leave till you unlock the phone. Do we have custody? I think you do. After Delgado complied, the detective questioned him at length about the murders without Mirandizing him. 
I think that was a mistake. Sorry, boys. Sack. <laughs> I think your I think your detective screwed the pooch on this one. In the course of the interview, Delgado confessed that he had shot Cannon, and we'll call this confession one. Now, there is a thing to where cops were doing it for a while is. I can question you without Miranda, even though you're in custody. I don't want to trigger you that you're a suspect, so I'll get you to admit something without Miranda. Then I'll advise you of Miranda and ask you to repeat what you said before Miranda, and then I'll try and use that because I Mirandized you and you said it. Even though I knew when I was questioned the first time it was wrong, I should have Mirandized you. And and then there was some sort of, for a while, there, they, they told cops, DAs were like telling cops, stop doing that. It's a civil rights violation. You're getting in trouble. You're in muddy waters. Don't do it. But it, it's still done to this day, sometimes not intentional, sometimes by cops not realizing that, you know, what custody is and what's in the mind of the person and how's it going to look to the court. But I digress. Let's stay on this. We got confession one. Okay. Another detective who had been listening to the interview from another room phoned the interrogation room and told the detectives it was time. And they put that in quotes because that's what the detective said he said. He goes, I called him and I said it was time. And all cops know when it's time, what was really being said behind the walls, yo, man, they're going there and grill him, see what you can get before we Mirandize him. And then we'll see what he says. And then when he called him and said it's time, the cop would know, uh-oh, now. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what the detective's probably said is he... He may have been a suspect, but we weren't real sure he wasn't the primary focus of our investigation. We just knew there was text messages. We knew he was connected, and we were focusing on him. As soon as he made confession one, now there was no doubt in our mind that he was a suspect. Therefore, we were going to interrogate him. Therefore, we knew it was time to Mirandize. Is that reasonable? Yeah, I, I think it is, and I think that happens quite a lot. Okay, the detective did so. Uh... It was time to advise the riot of the man, right? The detective did so and invited him to repeat his confession he had just made. And Delgado, confession number two. So now we have two confessions that the guy killed him. I think it's a pretty easy case. He goes to jail, right? All right, let's see. Before the trial, Delgado find a, filed a motion to suppress confession one and two. The court suppressed confession one, but not confession two. Now, who thinks they know why? Why did they not do two and why did they not do one? Eh, you may be right. Consequently, confession two was used against Delgado at trial and he was found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder. Yay! Good guys win. Eh, maybe. All right, let's see. Discussion. On appeal, De uh, Delgado argued, and they say Delgado, basically his lawyers, his defense attorneys, his free legal, because Delgado didn't have any money, he was a free criminal, probably had a rap sheet of 14 pages. So all this is paid for by the government. So we're paying a government to defend Delgado against a government paid to prosecute him, against government paid cops to arrest him, against government paid courts to convict him, and maybe get him time in a government thing. Do you think government maybe is working together? Well, never mind. I digress. Let's stay on point for this. On appeal, Delgado argued a motion to press uh, because he had not been Mirandized, confession one, and had therefore not waived his rights. He also argued that confession two should have been suppressed because it was a product of an illegal two-step interrogation process. And that two-step is kind of what I told you. You know, we go to you. We think you're you're handcuffed on scene. We know you're in custody. We're like, dude, what the hell are you doing out here, man? There's shooting. We just pulled the gun off you. The shot the dude. What? Why'd you kill him, man? He rip you off? Yeah, man, he ripped me off, and he was screwing my girlfriend, so I capped his ass. Oh, he just admitted to it. I better remind. I better Mirandize him and see if I can get that after Miranda. Okay, dude. Since you just told me that, I gotta tell you your rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to correct the attorney. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court of law. Do you waive these rights? Oh, hey, man, you just told me you capped him. Do you want to change that story, or is that really what happened? No, man, that's right. I capped him. Now I have it under. That's kind of what they're calling the two-step if it's planned. I don't know if cops plan it, but I know we question people when there hasn't been Mirandized, and then as soon as we get something incriminating, we go, oop, we better Mirandize and get that just to make sure we don't lose it. So uh, confession one, 
It was settled that the officers may not interrogate a suspect who is in custody unless he expressly or implied waived his Miranda rights. The attorney general argued a waiver was not required before Delgado made the confession. One, because he had not been notified that he was free to go, or he had been notified. Yeah, he was notified he was free to go, but then he was told, you can't leave till you unlock your phone and custody reattach, and therefore was no longer in custody. Even so, said the court, Delgado was back in custody before he made the first confession because, oh shit. Okay, I'm back. Hit the wrong button. Even though he said I was back in custody for me, when the second defective entered the room and told Delgado he could not leave until the contents of his phone had been downloaded. Thus, the court ruled that that confession one should have been suppressed. Okay, confession one is gone. Now, if they had tried to get a warrant, I'm, I'm going to go off base here a little bit. Because he confessed, if they said, you know what? If he didn't confess to two, let's say it just stopped right there. He made confession one, then went, you know what? He just admitted. Let's stop our interrogation. Let's get a warrant and go search his home. They get a warrant, they go search his home, and they find the gun. They find a plan that he planned to kill him, and they find dope. All that will be suppressed. Even though they went and got a warrant saying that he confessed, because the confession was turned out, the warrant becomes fruits of the poisonous tree. They got the warrant based on that, unless they can prove that they would have found that stuff in his home without this warrant at a later time. And sometimes you can. And that gets back to inevitable discovery. I talked about that other one. But let me stay on point here. Confession 2. Let's talk about Confession 2. Has a general rule, if officers obtain a statement from a suspect in violation of Miranda, Confession 1 was in violation because he went back into custody and they ask him. A second statement will also be suppressed. That's normally because I told you that was that planning. This is, however, an exception to this rule. Specifically, a second statement may be admissible if, one, Miranda violation was neither coercive in nature nor the result of a tactical, meaning an intentional, Miranda rights violation. The courts did not see that these cops planned this in and out of custody, this second and first. They didn't see, through their statements and questioning and review and everything, they did not see a plan or a tactical, intentional plan. Therefore, the suspect freely waived his rights after they read him his rights, and he made a second statement. So he was toast. Delgado argued that the detectives had, in fact, deliberately violated Miranda. Of course, his defense attorney is going to say that. Because they conducted and demonstrated that they were engaged in an illegal two-step interrogation process. What's the two-step? Well, it's a dance here in Texas. But in legal terms, it's a technique or ploy in which officers intentionally interrogate a suspect in custody without obtaining him a waiver, although they know that any statements he will make will be suppressed, their plan is to Mirandize him immediately afterwards and encourage him to repeat it. The two-step works on the proven theory that the suspect will usually waive his rights and repeat the unmirandized statement because he thinks that it will be used against him and thus he therefore has nothing to lose by repeating it. That's where the court rules that this trickery, you know, everybody's like, cops can lie. We can lie under certain limited positions. We can't lie in court. We can't lie about things to coerce a statement that is threatening. We can lie that, hey, a witness saw you, dude. And then if he gives a statement, we can lie on that. But there's certain limitations on when we can lie. It's not like we can run around and lie on everything. But... All right, that it can be used against me and nothing to lose by repeating it. Uh, Delgado argued that the detectives conducted the two separate investigations, in this case, demonstrating they were engaged in the illegal two-step. The court disagreed. But it did so not because the detective's conduct demonstrated confusion and miscommunication rather than the implementation of her plan. So the court ruled that the cops screwed up. They... They call it confusion and miscommunication instead of incompetency and not knowing the law. And they were too stupid to do it right, but we're not going to let a murder go because the cops are stupid. We'll only let a murder go when the cops are intentionally trying to subvert the Miranda or legal issues. So the court ruled on that. Okay, you can, you can disagree or agree. The record... Suggesting deliberate protocol, Miranda guided the detectives, uh, suggested they acted with little or no method at all, meaning they were stumbling around and just got freaking lucky. 
The court act, uh, the Fair Administration of Justice demand that peace officers be trained in Miranda procedure and adhere to their training. Here's where the court said, you guys aren't trained because you screwed it up. The system did not function in several ways in this case. But because the court ruled that the detective's error was not intentional, and remember, I always say intent is really big for me in crimes and in cops' behavior and in, in a lot of things, Intent is key. If a guy's intending to break the law, everything bad that happens should come down on his shoulders. If a cop's intending to help somebody, then anything bad that happens shouldn't come down on his shoulders because his intent is to help. If it's true intent to help. I mean, the government always wants to stick their nose and try to help when they're literally trying to screw you over. But well, I digress. That's a different topic. It ruled that the confession... Uh, two, was admissible. It also ruled that although the confession... One should have been suppressed. The error was harmless because it contained virtually nothing that Delgado did not repeat voluntarily during a second interrogation. Consequently, the court affirmed Delgado's conviction. So this is just one little case, a short synopsis. I mean, this case probably had thousands of pages of, of documents and recordings and, and photographs. And so this is, and, and I like these, and they do it in a point of view sometime at the end. They discuss these kind of iffy cases with these fingers that really what I call trip cops up sometime because they don't fully understand the difference between custody, implied custody, uh, what's probable cause, what's reasonable suspicion. It, do they, do a lot of cops have it, have probable cause or reasonable suspicion? They just don't know how to convey it and articulate it. So I thought that was a pretty good case. Figured I'd do this uh, case review and uh, maybe if you guys like it, uh, I'll, I'll do some more of these. All right, we'll end that there.